when I tell people I broke my neck skydiving, it always sounds very dramatic, but actually it was just another day, another jump. I'd done several hundred before, and this one was no different from the others, except that when I came into land, I was going too fast, and uh, I touched down feet first, fell over, and couldn't get up. It was about three weeks after my accident before I was told the uh, implications of what I'd done, the paralysis was permanent and that uh, I wouldn't walk or use my hands again. And I remember feeling quite furious that everybody else had known this for three weeks, but nobody had told me. Although the reason they hadn't told me was for my own benefit, uh, it still felt, um, I still felt very angry about it. It was a great shock to everybody who knew me and for me to find out that I was paralysed, but um, my family felt that I was very positively dealing with it and that they needed to support me in that. And I felt that they were very positive in the way that they were supporting me. So we very much fed off each other's um, positivity and really worked, I think, all together with the theory of just dealing with one day at a time and, and coping with a little bit when we were ready to cope with it. Uh, friends, some of them immediately wanted to come and see me and were amazing and others to this day, eight years later, have never come and seen me because they've not felt they've been able to cope with it and that was quite difficult for me to, to get to grips with. But in hindsight, I think I understand totally if I were in their situation, it might be very difficult to go and see somebody who previously had been so active and suddenly had been confined to a bed on bed rest, coping conservatively with their injury. If I could give somebody one piece of advice, if they just had a spinal cord injury themselves, it would be to not worry about the things that are outside your control, to not worry about what you should be doing at work or at home, but actually just to deal with your injury just one day at a time. Give your body the time to do as much healing as it can and uh, just think about being as relaxed as possible. My wife, Glyn, came off a horse. I knew then, at the moment of the fall, this was serious. For the first few weeks, I was lost, miles away. I wasn't in control of anything. I probably didn't even realize that I was in control until as time went by and I realised that I needed to pull myself together and pull everything together. I wasn't a person of routine, but I felt when Glyn had the accident and things were moving on that that was the only way forward. Routine helped me get some balance back into my life. Before my accident, I'd been a really independent person and now suddenly I was in this position where I could do nothing for myself. I think I found the most humiliating part of being in hospital was letting the nurses do all the personal things for me, like my bowels or showering me. I just found it so embarrassing. I, I cried myself to sleep and, and just, just couldn't cope with it. But then you realise that, well, everybody else is having it done and if they don't do it for me, I'm going to be ill. So you just have to put up with it and come to terms with it. Being in hospital can be seen as a negative. But at the same time, if you reverse that, it can be a positive. Being in hospital with people with the same problems, mothers, fathers, friends, and indeed patients, of course, is sharing without knowing. It can be good. It is good. When I first had my accident, I couldn't see anything positive coming from it. But then after a while, you start to realise that actually, it's not about what I can't do, it's what I can do. Before my accident, I was so busy rushing around, doing so many things, that I never had, had time to stop and think. After my accident, I realised but actually, I had time and I could use some of my creative talents to do things like sculpting and art, things I never had time for before. 
and and now I'm finding that my life is actually quite fulfilled because I am doing things that I really want to do. John and I are probably closer together now because we share things. I don't think I had time to share things before. It was all about being independent. Now I want to share. I was at a party about a year ago. I'd had a few to drink and dived into a swimming pool and broke my neck. Being six foot four in a four foot deep pool, not the best idea I've ever had really, diving in. The main consultant in pool, he said to me that you've got 50, 50% chance of walking. So I was like, no, you can, you can jog on. I don't want to know, I'll be fine. And he went, okay, probably with that attitude you might be. We've lived in Christchurch, both of us, most of our lives. We'd never actually met. We were in hospital in opposite beds, but Sam had to stay flat, and I couldn't get out of bed, so we never saw each other. It was late at night, about three in the morning, and as I was driving home, I came over the brow of the hill, there was a fox in the road, and like an idiot, I swerved. We went through the trees, the rear end of the car hit a tree. The impact of the tree pushed the engine into me, which broke my neck. And then the car ended up in a field and in flames. I was really lucky, I think I ended up being able to walk again. And for the first few weeks were just a lot of emotions, a lot of friends and family have been affected by it. And, and all of a sudden I've got to rely on people to help me do things and some of my friends are quite scared to be around me or were That's the through seen, fear of either hurting me and making me worse and or just not knowing what to do. You've got to really, really try and relax and let your body do what it needs to do because it will, your body is amazing. But I was kind of in denial from the beginning because I could feel my feet I thought I was going to get up and walk out of hospital in a few weeks. And then as it goes on, you kind of settle in to the injury. And then you, you come suddenly down to earth as the weeks progress. And you realise you have got to work with what you've got and not try and achieve something that probably isn't going to happen because of the injury you've sustained. The town is just down the road. Pubs and that is fine. And like Nelly, my PA, is brilliant. So we go to the pub and it'll be like, right, drink. And like I said, beer through a straw. It's not good. So Nelly will feed me my pint. Looking back at being in hospital, listening to what the doctors would say, they'd ask you to do things you just wouldn't want to do it. But I think it's best if it, it, if you do it because yeah totally i protested a lot at first against you know things the consultant would tell you to do he'd say it and you'd think what are you crazy but now a year down the line you realize they know what they're talking about and if at first you don't like it you know do it for a while and then talk to them and see what they say if it's really not working then you might not have to do it but definitely follow the doctor's orders. Yeah, there's air for your benefit at the end of the day, aren't there? Totally. It has changed my life totally, but it gave me a fresh start. You know, now I'm all settled, I've got a new place. And it's, uh, life is good. In a sort of morbid sort of way, it's probably the best thing that's ever happened to me having this accident. Physically, it's not. Physically, it's the worst thing that could have Possibly, but mentally, I'm happier, and I've sort of, in a stupid little way, I've probably, been, I know who I am. In making this film, we want to help everyone involved to see a way forward. It's quite normal to want to know what the future holds and to want to plan ahead, but with spinal cord injury, especially in the early stages, it sometimes helps to take each day at a time. 
The professional care team will develop a plan of action. This will involve not just the doctors and nurses on the ward, but physiotherapists, psychotherapists, and even a logistical team to help with a broad range of issues such as grants, government assistance, and returning home when the time comes. The care team know that you'll have a lot to deal with, both emotionally and practically, so they'll be prepared to help you at each stage. With spinal cord injury, you come to realise that it's impossible to make promises and hard to make predictions. But the patient stories in this film show that it is possible to rebuild a good life after injury. For some, it's possible to participate in competitive activities, creative activities, or even to return to work. So, whilst the future won't always be easy, one can definitely find reasons to be positive.